I think I finally figured out my Valorant setup. If you've been in my streams the last few UZ drops, you know I've been trying a ton of things to figure out what has been wrong with my setup. My biggest issues were declines and also Q passes, and I think I finally fixed it. So in today's video, I'm going to give you my exact Valorant setup and some things I found out while I was testing. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's go ahead and tackle the first thing that I know a lot of people want to know about, and that's how to pass the queue. I'm sure a ton of you run thousands and thousands of tasks and don't get past the queue very much. And for a while, I was having the same issue until I changed some things around. And now you can see how many times I passed in the past few drops. One of the most basic things that I'm sure that you hear a lot is you need good Gmails to pass the queue. And one way to achieve this is by farming in AYCD or any other capture tools. Of course, farming Gmails doesn't guarantee you that you're going to have good Gmails in the future, but it definitely can help versus you not farming them at all. I hate to break it to you guys. A lot of you guys are buying really bad gmails even though you might be spending ten dollars fourteen dollars per gmail that does not mean that they're good some of these companies are just selling you gmails and hoping that you come back and buy more if you have even just a little bit of success you're thinking that more gmails is going to solve your problem that is not the case you always want to stick with quality over quantity if you have some aged gmails by some friends and family i recommend you using those over buying some new gmails you kind of want to build up that trust with google and to make it seem like you're a real person and speaking of aycd one of the biggest misconceptions is if you have a 0.9 score in aycd that does not mean that you're going to have a 0.9 score on Yeezy Supply. Every site that pulls your V3 score has some different level of difficulty. If you ever run for sites like Finish Line and JD Sports, you see that you get past the queue a lot more often. One of the things that I've been measuring lately instead of 0.9 score is one clicks. I know one clicks are not related to anything on Yeezy Supply because you're not doing any actual captures. What I have found and other people have found is one clicks make it seem like you're more trusted. If Google is giving you one clicks on an account, it's way more trusted than any account that doesn't have one clicks. So in my AYCD, you see that all of these are 0.9, but not every single Gmail I have is one click. So whenever the drop happens, even though I have 30 Gmails, I only run the ones that have one clicks on them. For some people, this might not make as much sense, but I kind of want to have quality over quantity. I want every single capture that is requested to come from the best gmails possible so when it comes drop time the only ones i start are the ones with one clicks another thing that's very important is the ips that you use with your gmails lately i've been using proxy heaven and nocturnal isps those are the same ones that i also use in my task i haven't tried running dedicated capture proxies in a very long time but i haven't seen the use for it and i don't want to add on the extra expense if i don't need to so i've been sticking with just regular isps another big debate that people have is aycd versus inbot harvesters i'm just gonna say aycd has been a game changer for me before i switched over to aycd i would probably pass maybe two to five times per drop and that's with two copies of valor but since i switched to ayc these are the numbers that i've been having which is a huge increase from what it was before so i'm gonna go ahead and advocate for aycd but i also want to show you guys this statement right here that came from justin who is the developer of valor i'm not gonna read this whole thing if you want to stop and pause it and read the whole thing in depth you can but just to summarize it is basically saying that a bunch of people that use inbound harvesters pass hundreds of times with just one gmail but if you're able to pass with aycd and not inbot it's because since you farm in aycd it already has a session generated which is slightly more trusted in AYC versus an inbot once you switch over and start a new session so Justin's saying in this case if you've been using AYCD and you've been passing well with it stick with AYCD if you do decide to use inbot harvesters you can open up as many as you want a lot of people recommend one to two solvers if you have a really good gmail one is perfectly fine you could pass hundreds of times with just that one gmail and just to show some proof I tried the inbot harvester also while I had another copy on AYCD and the numbers are still pretty good it's not near as good as my AYCD copy but it's a lot better than my previous setup as for the device I run Valor on I tend to run on a server but my situation is a bit different because I'm also streaming and recording at the exact same time so I just want to dedicate Valor to its own machine so I end up running one server per instance so for example if i'm running two instances i have two servers running and one valor on each of them just to ensure everything runs smooth there's no connection issues nothing is going to crash when i'm running valor on those servers that is the only program i want running i use a ton of servers mostly i stick with amazon web servers mostly because they're really cheap you can get some of them for about 40 cents per hour the one i use i think is 70 cents per hour which is like a c5 2x large i think that machine is an 8x16 you really don't need anything more than an 8x16 especially if you're running just one bot you might be fine with just a four by eight but just to ensure that everything runs smooth i recommend you upscaling just a little bit especially if you're someone that likes to run a lot of tasks now let's talk about proxies i've been using resi proxies and isps every single drop you should always have a combination of both whenever you can it's hard for me to give you guys an idea of which is better because i use so many different providers and also i'm running more tasks on resis because i have more ips versus when i'm running isps which i only have like a set of 25 to 50 per drop and one of the reasons i say use a mix of resis and isp 
DPs. And sometimes the firewall will favor resi proxies more. Just in case one of them doesn't work, at least you have the other ones to fall back on. And I want to show you guys my task setup. It's really basic. This is it right here. There's really not much to it. I mean, Valor is one of the simplest bots to set up. You just throw in a skew, you select your profile, your proxies. And that's pretty much it. For each copy of Valor, I run around 1,000 to 1,200 tasks. This is another thing that you had to do trial and error on because for a while I was running 2K tasks per instance. And I know that's a whole lot, which could have played a huge factor into why I wasn't copying as many pairs when I was running that many tasks. So I decreased my task count from 2,000 to 1,200 tasks. Now I've been seeing a way better ratio in terms of success and pass rates. I've seen people run as low as 800. Some people run up to 1,500. It's just whatever you prefer. As for starting your task, you want to start your task pretty much when the queue goes live. In the past, I think when I made that last video, Valor didn't have a waiting for sale option but now that Valor has that option you could pretty much start anytime the queue goes up because as time goes on a lot of more people are going to be starting their tasks which is going to make it a lot harder for you to connect to the site as well now last thing i want to talk about is profiles and the types of cards you should be using now i'm no expert on this especially because the last few drops i've been getting tons and tons of declines since then i think i fixed the issue but i haven't been able to test it out just yet if you want to know the results of that make sure you follow on my twitter make sure you join my discord and i'll post the results in there but as for cards that you should be using a lot of people recommend privacy and slash cards and based on the screenshot right here from Justin American Express is gonna decline a lot more than those other cards now I don't want to doubt these stats because obviously he has more information than me he has information about every card that people are running in Valor so he's able to see the numbers but one of the most interesting things I've seen is I've been running privacy cards for the past few drops and I've probably racked up easily over 150 declines in just two drops but someone I know by the name of Ty has been running American Express cards and has zero declines on a use spot drop meanwhile I had one to two pairs and everything else after those two pairs with straight declines. I might need to jig my profiles a little bit better instead of just trying to use my regular address, which has worked for me in the past, but that time might be up. So that's pretty much it. That is my Valor setup. If you ever want to see a real live cop, I'm always streaming for pretty much every single big drop. Make sure to stop by my streams. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below. What was your biggest clip on you supply? And I'll catch you guys in the next one.